Hi and welcome to another video. Uh, I'm Mark and this is the Africa Cichlid Hub. Today we're going to be talking about tank maintenance. Now tank maintenance um, can be quite tedious but it needs to be done on a regular basis. Um, not only for the aesthetics of the tank but obviously for the health of the fish as well. Uh, when it comes to doing my tank maintenance I plan ahead. Uh, I plan ahead what needs to be done on a daily basis, every other day, on a weekly basis and every month or every month thereafter. Uh, so the first thing uh, I normally do uh, probably on uh, an everyday basis is obviously monitor the, the tank, um, check is there, if there's anything that needs to be replaced like a, a rock falling off or I check the hull for the fish with any scrapes or scratches. Uh, I just check the whole tank um, on the inside and the outside as well just when I'm watching the fish just to make sure there's nothing that I haven't picked up on. Now every other day I clean the glass um, on every probably three three to four days because my tank is quite overstocked at the moment I do a water change if it wasn't really overstocked every seven days I do a water change uh, every say five to six months I clean my filters out but I clean them out earlier if I notice my uh, the water flow is uh, reducing now I normally clean my filters out um, on a regular basis a bit earlier because I use um, filter floss to help polish the water, keep the water nice and clean but I don't clean anything else, I just exchange uh, I just take out the filter floss and replace it with some new filter floss or the filter uh, media doesn't get cleaned until you know five or six months so the first thing I'll be talking about is cleaning the glass on the inside and the outside uh, what I tend to use is just a sponge uh, the sponge that you can use for cleaning your pots and pans and stuff like that but I use this specifically just for uh, my aquarium on the outside is quite soft and then on the other side is quite coarse now before I start cleaning the, the glass of the sponge I use a, a card to get off those hard bits of uh, hard to clean algae patches um, because I keep on, a, on top of my uh, maintenance cleaning the glass I don't get the, the patches of algae but if you can't do it all the time and you find yourself trying to scrub them algae bits off with a sponge or one of those magnets uh, um, you're best off using a card or a, a razor blade now when you're using a razor blade be careful if you're a bit too young you don't think you should be using it ask an adult to help you out um, but you can't go wrong with a this, this is basically uh, a, an old credit card this is just an O2 top up card but you can use any type of card you know what I mean as long as it's plastic um, and it's got a flat edge you're fine so what I tend to do is I use this is almost this section is quite self explanatory you probably know how to do this yourself but I just cover it for the beginner uh, setting up a new tank now because I do this on a regular basis um, I don't have to worry about scrubbing it all the time I do this before I use the sponge, I just go up and down on an angle to get off the hard to, uh, the hardest get off uh, algae patches. Now before I use the sponge, uh, you probably do this already, I'm not too sure, uh, but if you're using quite coarse sand, or any type of sand really, you, you've got to be careful because the sand can get caught inside your sponge and also when the magnet uh, cleans as well. So what I tend to do, I get in the tank beforehand and I move all the sand back uh, about an inch two inches so what this helps you do is helps the sponge be able to get all the way down to the bottom of the glass uh, and not pick up any of the sand inside the sponge because uh, you know once you get sand in there and you're scrubbing away you know you're just in the world of your own you're going to end up scratching your glass so that's a really good tip to move all the sand away before you clean inside your tank so when it comes to cleaning the outside of the tank I've got a, a tea towel that I just use for aquarium uh, maintenance that I just clean every other day with some warm water, I don't use any detergents or anything like that. Then for cleaning the outside, I dip it in the aquarium water and I give the outside a good wipe down. You know, you can do the same with the uh, with the cabinet and stuff like that, keep all the dust away, keep any water patches that's building up from spillage and stuff. And then to polish the, the glass off, I just use some kitchen roll. Um, Kitchen roll gives the tank a nice clean and shiny uh, finish to it. Make sure it's nice and dry and you can't go wrong. Don't use any chemicals or spray on the tank um, because obviously that can get underneath the can canopy and the hood, set on top of the water and it's quite toxic for the fish and will kill it. 
And that goes for anything that you've got in the room as well. Don't use any smellies or don't spray uh, aerosols and stuff like that around the tank. Just self expand and use your head on that one. Um, so the next thing uh, that I do say on a weekly basis is my water change. And water changes on an African sticker tank is very, very important. Uh, most of the time the tank is overstocked, um, so the amount of waste that builds up is quite high. Um, and also there can be unleft food that's, uh, that's not um, been eaten. And now also, another tip for you as well, if you're using fine sand that can be quite compact, um, or any type of sand really, you know, uh, it does build up. If you're not moving the sand around on a regular basis, what's going to happen is you're going to get gases build up um, in the bed of the sand. So what I tend to do before I start even doing water change is I get down and I move the sand around. And what you'll notice is uh, bubbles coming up to the top of the water. Uh, that's the gases being trapped. And it can be, become quite harmful for the fish, so do it on a regular basis. Every time you do the water change, move the sand around as well. Um, so when it comes to me doing my water change, I like to keep it nice and simple. I don't bother with things like uh, pumps and stuff like that. I'm quite lucky my sink's quite close to the tank. So for example, uh, I, I use a garden hose. This is not the garden hose that I use. This is a piece that I cut off because my hose is quite, uh, quite long. So I was able to cut off a piece to give you guys an example. This is obviously just normal everyday garden hose. Uh, it's about two inches in diameter. Um, the amount of water that you want to be siphoning out is depending on what size tank you've got uh, and how regularly you do your water changes. Now I do my water changes now because it's quite heavily overstocked, probably every three to four days and I change about 30%, which is probably around about down here. Um, if you've got a fry tank, loads of fry, do a water, probably 25% water change probably uh, every other day. Um, obviously you need to keep down that tank nice and healthy as well because there's probably a load of frying them getting fed quite a few times a day so you want to keep down ammonia and the nitrate levels in that tank as well. Um, if your tank is moderately overstocked I recommend just doing say a 50% a water change on a weekly basis. Uh, not everyone does it 50% at one time, you can break it up doing 25% every three days. Um, it's, it's totally up to you but you need to be doing big water changes on African cichlid tanks. Um, so yeah, getting back to the subject of what I do in a water change, basically all I do is one ended um, and I start the process, so I'll just wedge it in, get it in like that, and then the other end goes down to the sink and I siphon it out and the water starts flowing. Uh, and then I just use some tape to tape it in there so I've got no worries of it coming off. But most of the time I'm doing water change by myself. And then when I'm siphoning the water uh, out of the tank, I get about two inches of both the sand just to pick up any waste, I mean, it, it's completely up to you. You can get something over the side, uh, over the, the end if you don't want to uh, pick up loads of sand, but it doesn't really bother me because only the stuff that I normally get up because I'm quite high above the sand is the finer bits and, you know, the poo and uh, the uneaten food and stuff like that. And then all I do when I'm putting the water back in the tank, I, I'm quite lucky because um, I have one outlet, but I have hot and cold on the outlet. Uh, I just put boiling water on one end, uh, get it nice and soft and I just place that onto the outlet and away I go. Now obviously I use the chlorinator um, so when I'm putting in, in the water uh, I add the chlorinator, you know the amount specified on the actual uh, on the tub. So I drop my heater down uh, I drop my power head down. Obviously you want your heater um, below the level of the water uh, before you even start siphoning out the water. If you keep the heater at normal uh, height and you start siphoning the water down, you, you'll notice uh, steam coming off the heater basically. Um, and then what happens is when you fill it back up, the heater's going to crack. So drop the water, uh, the heater level, the heater below the water that you're going to be reducing the tank to. So if the, heat, if the heat is up to about here, turn on its side, so it's obviously below the water. Um, see, with the African cichlid tank, you don't really need to worry um, too much about getting the temperature completely spot on when you're adding water back in the tank. But you don't want it dropping below, say, 22 degrees, 
because it was just what happens is the fish become very dormant uh, and startled um, and they're not very active. So add warm with it as well. Yeah, it's completely up to you. Cold water changes can bring on um, some breeding activity. So at the end of the day, it's completely up to you. But don't drop it below 22 degrees. Um, you will end up with problems with the fish as well. So keep that in mind when you're doing the water change. So that's pretty much it with the water change. Um, keep on top of them. Really important with that for a particular tank. Okay, so this section is going to be covering water testing. Now, water testing um, goes hand in hand in my weekly maintenance. I like to use the, the liquid uh, type test kits. Uh, I don't use the test strips because they are very inaccurate. The test you was on a weekly basis, just keep on top of it. Um, it's basically knowing your tank personality really more than anything like that. Uh, if you can anticipate something before it's going to happen, you can then better combat that than obviously testing more of it, say once a month. It's not good enough. Test it weekly. Um, but if you're around the tank and you've got nothing to do, by all means, test it every single day if you want to. It's completely up to you. But you need to be testing it minimum on a weekly basis. Okay, filter maintenance. So at the beginning of the video I talked about that I change out my filter floss every week. Um, that is because the filter floss picks up the finer stuff in the tanks and it can um, come, become quite clogged up and it will restrict the flow of the filter. So that's the main thing that I change on a weekly basis. Um, every five to six months that's when I do my big filter clean out. Now, not only do I clean the filter media, I also exchange some of the, feed, uh, the media contents, things like the bio balls, um, some new sponges and stuff like that. Now, I run two external filters, so I only clean one external filter at a time uh, and a month apart. The reason I do this is when I clean one filter out using obviously tank water, um, cleaning the media out in the tank water, um, I don't want to clean it. So, it's complete, so there's like no bacteria left in the filter. You want to leave just enough to keep that, uh, the filter alive, basically. Now, if you clean, in, um, if you clean two filters at the same time, you're going to end up with probably your tank crashing. Uh, and all that, because obviously you just clean out all the healthy bacteria. And, uh, and then what's going to happen is, once you get those filters running again, the bacteria is not existent anymore. But the air is going to be very low. And obviously, the tank's going to crash or spike and that's going to lead to high nitrate levels, ammonia levels, and so we end up killing your fish. That's why I clean them a month apart. So once I clean one tank, uh, one filter out, um, I leave it sit for a month, can't do anything to it, and then I'll go and clean the other one. So by that time, with the other filter helping to back up that filter, all the bacteria in that tank is back up to what it was before. Now then I take that one out and I just repeat the process. That's really, really important for the beginner. Don't be cleaning out the filter media with tap water. Tap water is just going to kill your bacteria off completely. Um, so I just get a massive bucket, obviously take the, uh, the filter apart and then clean it tray by tray. Um, you're going to end up down the bottom, you know, for the experienced guys, you know you get all that um, horrible sludgy type crap. Now for the people that are pretty squeamish, they don't like doing it, don't put I'll clean your filters because you don't like doing it and you can't stand the smell or the touch, you know, the, the feel of it and stuff like that. Get someone in that knows what they're doing. If you don't clean your filters, um, you're going to end up with big problems with your tank. So get someone in that will help you out uh, and they can do it for you. you now, when it comes to cleaning the media, um, just squeeze the pads out, uh, the filter pads, into the water. You know, we don't want to get it completely spotless, just get it enough cleaned enough um, to allow a good flow of water going through it again. And now when it comes to things like the, the bio uh, balls, you know, the ceramic ones and stuff like you want to be changing them out every five, six or you know every seven months and add some new ones. Now when I said only do one at a time, that goes for when you change your media as well. Don't change media on both filters at one time because you're going to end up with problems again. Change the media on one and then do the other one the next month or the month after. It's it, it, it's really, really important. Don't do them at the same time. Now, if you've got uh, an internal filter as well, it's exactly the same as cleaning an external. Um, use tank water, get it nice and clean, uh, and, and away you go. Now, re remember, the filter maintenance is really, really important, not only for the health of the fish as well, but also it helps uh, 
keep up with the flow of the tank. Now if you notice that the flow from the filters is down, get inside the filter straight away so it might be clogging it up or there might be um, a huge build up of finer sand if you're using a fine sand as well. I'll take that into consideration before when you're choosing your sand. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for looking after your tank in regards to maintenance. Make sure uh, you're always doing it. Make sure you plan ahead. Uh, keep on top of things. The main things are the water changes. Um, the tank will be fine. The tank uh, glass gets a bit dirty. Um, keep on top of the water changes. Make sure your filters are always uh, up and running properly. Make sure you're changing the media out every five to seven months or when it's specified to on the packaging. Um, and you shouldn't have any problems making sure when you're doing your water changes you're adding the chlorinator just to get out all the impurities in your tap water um, and if you want to add salts just follow the, di the directions on the, uh, on the packaging so you know I like making videos to help people out I always say I don't know everything there is to know about the hobby uh, but hopefully from my experiences I can help the beginner out you know, setting up the tanks along the way, making sure the fish are nice, nice and healthy. Um, it takes me quite a, sometimes a lot of time to make these videos, so I'd appreciate you guys if you um, could give me some feedback, you know, in the comments and stuff like that. If you like the video, a thumbs up is always nice, it helps the channel grow. So I hope this video did help some people, uh, and as always, thanks for watching.